Hey everybody, XJoe81X here, and we're on location at Joe's Garage. Today we're going to be changing the oil and filter in a 1966 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. It's a uh, stock numbers matching engine, small block V8, 327 cubic inch, 350 horse. Uh, we'll worry about everything else later, but basically I'm going to run it for about 10 minutes because that's what they say to do. Why? Because it thins out the oil and it's easier to drain and all that stuff that I'm sure is uh, clinically proven. So we're going to start up the engine in a little bit and we're going to start it for 10 to 15 minutes, maybe even 10 minutes. It doesn't need to get up to full operating temperature and the thermostat opens just enough where the oil gets to a thinner degree. We're going to be using uh, Penn's oil, 10W30. Uh, for the last five years I've been using 5W20. Um, JK18 is here because why not? <laughs> no, he's going to be the guy who hands me the two parts that I need that were already... Right. and. Uh, that's about it. So what I've been using in the past is this little rinky dinky thing. Um, seven quarts. The Corvette takes five. So what you end up doing is filling it and then you're pouring it in and we all know what happens with that. So what I ended up purchasing is this thing. 16 quarts. We'll see how it works. You put it underneath, you open this up, which we don't need now. So we'll just do this now before we forget. I might make the holes bigger, but this is trial and error. The oil's going to hit it. I'm sure from the factory it's higher here. It's over here. You keep this open, I guess, for air. This tightens. When you're done, you put the plug back. You theoretically could store it, or you could open this up and pour it back into something that a store would take. So we're going to try this. I can't imagine it not working. It has such a bigger surface area than that bucket I just showed you. And so we're going to keep this available. If you've been watching my channel for years, these are the pads that are from Milro. They're oil and chemical. I usually use them up, and when they're done, probably won't ever be able to find them. They're pretty good with oil. They soak it up, and not for nothing, every time I change the oil, it doesn't even matter how simple it is. You can never not get anything on the surface. So what we're going to do is to hand over the phone to Jay. We're going to just get a start up in case you guys like that and uh, we'll be back. All right, put it in neutral. Take off the parking brake if you have one. This car was ran two weeks ago, so we'll do seven. Alright everybody, what we're going to do is run it for about 10 minutes, give or take. Uh, about 2-3 to three minutes high idle, which is kind of nice out, so it didn't get like a nice cold 30 degree high idle. So we're going to kick it down after I'm done in a minute, and then I'll do a good 10 minutes. And then when we bring it back in, we'll tell you how to jack it up, we'll pop the plug, and Jay will take over. Alright, we ran it for about 10 minutes. It's definitely hot it probably uh, yeah if the top hose is hot i'm assuming it's the uh temperature gauge opened up right jay right the thermostat well thermostat yeah well you can tell yeah, yeah you can definitely feel hot coolant in there so the thermostat actually did open yeah so listen this is a small block v8 numbers matching corvette it takes five quarts it takes four quarts in the engine and one quart in the filter and at, and that's all it is. It's very easy. You can't fuck that up. It's not four and a half. It's not six and a half. It is what it is. I'm going to pop the plug. 
We're gonna pop the filter. We're gonna talk during this whole thing. This is how I, X281X, changes this without a lift. Where you live, you might put blocks, you might do this, you might do that. Disclaimer is we're gonna do as much safety as we can. I have two legit jack stands and I have a legit uh, jack. We're gonna go as high as we can so my fat ass can fit underneath it. We're gonna use the creeper and Jay will take over as far as what no, uh, size the bolt is compared to the filter, compared to the engine, but this is it. So what I like to do is pull the dipstick a little bit. No reason, just pull it. What I like to do is take the, uh, the cap, put it right there. Does that mean anything? Is that clinically proven when you pop the uh, oil there, pan? Thing? There is theoretically, theoretically enough air that can get in through the dipstick too, but right. if you can help it drain faster, it just makes the it's job faster. It's not pressurized, so I guess it wouldn't. Um, I see smoke coming from that. Is that normal? That would be a little bit of blow-by and certainly normal oh, on an engine right, like this. Right. It's not, I mean, the engine was rebuilt back in 90... 90, 99. Two or three years ago, off camera, the lower part of the engine was taken apart and gone through. Underneath, you could see all the stuff. When you drop the oil pan, you could see the middle of the engine. There's a stamp that the piston said 99. The mechanic said that that means that that piston was factory made in 1999. They generally don't sit on the shelves, being that it's a small block Chevy. It doesn't have to be a Corvette piston, it's just a small block Chevy. So he's assuming 99 to 01 that this engine was taken apart. I don't know if it was taken out. And everything was done. And there's holes in, uh, not the camshaft, what's the bigger one? The crank? The crankshaft. There's holes. And my mechanic was telling me that that means that's be that was for balancing, taking out metal, putting in metal. So he's, his professional opinion was that this at least lower engine was done. And he's like, the crank is not coming out unless the engine comes out. So he's assuming that the engine was taken apart. So that's it. So we're going to put the jack up, set up the jack stands, and we're going to get underneath this bitch. All right, so we have a regular Craftsman three and a half ton jack. This car is only 2,800 pounds. And on this Corvette, it has a cross member in the front and in the back. In the back, it actually has the full rear end. Um, so if you're working on the rear end, you can't put it down. Um, this is the flattest spot. Usually you get the guys that are just throwing it out in the garage, but also the, gar uh, the driveway, but the driveway already has a significant drainage tilt. It's actually easier to just leave it on the garage. I don't need to go to the left except for the jack stand, so that's why the car is more proud on the left than the right. So there's a cross member underneath here. Some of you might agree to disagree. I kind of try to get it lined up. I do have to get under it. I do have to get down, and I did change this. This is the factory. I did have a rubber one, and the rubber one was deteriorating, and I felt like at any time it was going to, like, I guess for lack of better words, snap and do you really want it to snap while it's 14 feet in the air? <laughs> so as long as you just very calmly kind of know that's it all right we're kind of underneath it so i'm gonna get up and we're gonna use the Oh my body here, I got this little pad so you could go like that a hundred different ways from Sunday and hopefully it doesn't uh, hurt. Doesn't have to be exactly straight to jack. The piece that's used that's actually jacking up is on a, like a shaft so it swivels. You notice that it swivels, you really shouldn't play with it. But we're gonna go as high as we can. Because when I'm on the crawler, last time I was a little bit lower than I'd like to be. Many, many moons ago, this jack actually went down very slowly. I was jacking the car up to look at things, and it actually just slowly went down. So that's why the jack stand. Kind of like to tighten it a little bit more and then try to get the wobble out. Weird old trick, but not really. <laughs> so, 
trying to determine. I think that's where I want to be. I'll bleed this all the way up so it hits J in the eye. And we're going to take the jack stands. Careful not to scratch your own car. These are labeled Craftsman. Actually, it was a complete set. These came with that back when you were able to spend a decent amount of money and get things worth it. So what I like to do... Back when Bob Vila was young. Right. So what I like to do is there's a frame on each side of the Corvette. So I like to get in it like this. And I like to, there's a frame right here. I like to leave it at its lowest setting and I like to bring it in. Now I think the car is a little bit too low because I remember it being about two more inches in. So we're gonna jack the car up a little bit more. All right, so see how it was tight right about here? So I like to bring it in. Look at that, this is what I like, see? I bring it into the frame Give it a good, now theoretically I should be able to drop that jack stand and it's, I'm sorry, the jack and it should hold this, but we're not going to test that. I will mimic this on the other side and then we're going to pop the drain plug and the filter and get this going. Hello everybody, we're underneath the car. We're using a 916. Don't know if that's correct as far as the bolt, as far as SAE and OEM, but that's what it is. So what you do is you put it on and you, ah, you break it off. You can take this and put it down. You can unscrew with your hand. Be very careful, it is gonna be hot. It shouldn't burn. Now I have this nice pan, so what I'm going to do is probably let the bolt drop in because I don't need to catch it. That's one of the reasons the holes in it are so small. There we go, there we go, oh look at that, that's still honey. Is the camera catching that? That's still Absolutely. honey. Absolutely. Now it's not an original honey, but it's honey enough where it probably could have went another year. We're just gonna double check this cap that, yeah, it's tightened. And I'm very happy. I'm happy with the uh, pan. It's not filling up. I think the trick is to leave, leave that... Um, the air vent that open. Air vent open, which yeah. why would you need one? But I guess if you're storing this in the upright Otherwise position, it would start glugging down and might splash out. Right, so what you want to do is just now done-ish. So you want to just bring it over here. You can stick your hand in here. Gingerly, it's not that hot. You grab this, put it on the mat. We'll get a paper towel off camera. And that's just going to drain. That's pretty much going to piss out. You want to wait till it kind of glug glug. And uh, the next is going to be the filter. Um, what I can do, take this plug, move it over there. The filter is going to be, excuse me, pardon me, a three-fourths. So what I'm going to do is move these tools and we're going to position this in the sense where we're getting both things. See how I'm getting now the drip? Now we're going to tackle this plug right here. Now, this is hot. You can feel it because the, it's not dissipating. So when you loosen it very slowly, there you go. Now what it says is it's a canister. You very slowly loosen it. There's the drip. See it? If you can, hopefully it's still honey. If you want to position, there we go. I think we're good. Plug's still draining, the fuel filter's still draining. Now, what they say is because I'll show you this, you know, after. It's a shaft. So you push up, I didn't relieve enough pressure, and you push up and it drips out of here. 
there's one full quart in this canister. So I have never done this, but off camera, what they say is when you refill it, you put in about four quarts, you start the car. The oil pressure is at zero for like a good five to 10 seconds. And then if the car is working, the oil filter, uh, the catch pan, uh, the, that piece that's in the pan. Prime, pick up tube. Pick up tube, we'll pick it up and piss it out. Now, what guys are saying is, well, you're doing damage because the filter is dry. I don't have a lift. What you do is they want you to put almost half a quart in the filter fresh and bolt it up so the engine picks it up through the filter. Right. That's, that's a great idea if your filter is the standard oil filter that most cars use nowadays. That's just a spin-on can like that instead of a cartridge filter like this. The canister filters that we all know of that are metal, if your filter where it screws on points up to the sky, so it screws on the bottom of the engine, absolutely a great idea to put some oil in that so everything will get primed up in the engine right quick and this way you don't have a, a dry start or a dry spell of no oil pressure. In this case, that wasn't designed in. No, I'm also. It's a cartridge filter. There's no way that you're going to get oil in there. Right, you can, but it'll be heavier. Yeah. Again, on a lift, yes. This clearance. Look at me now. I'm pushing up the can to drain the full gallon. Sorry, the full quart in it, and I'm already in like a okay, like a compromising position. I get about halfway down, and then I bolt it, and it's heavy. And now this thing, I'm not for nothing, guys. I'm loving this thing. This is great. This is. Awesome. This is AutoZone. I think it was $12.99, 16 quarts. I'm still dripping out of the main. It's not filling up. It's not leaking, I'm assuming, Jay, right? Yeah, everything looks good. So, we're going to drain everything, and we'll come back. All right, everybody. We dropped the factory canister with the actual factory filter, which is still paper, you can convert that. It comes with a long shaft that goes into the engine block. Well, there's a piece of metal here, and there's a piece of metal on the engine block. It's got a seal, so with the right tool, or a tool, I was using this flathead, you kind of work around it. You could use a pick. You're not going to really dig into the engine block. So, oh, real quick, you can't see. I'm ready. I pull it coming off it's coming off and here it is that sits right here excuse me right on the engine I'm sorry right on the lip of the canister and right it, to seal the canister to the block and that's it you take um, a paper towel if you want you could dab the area it doesn't have to be clean because oil is going back and what we do is we could dab this area it's still dripping but it's definitely done what we're going to do is clean the oil pan bolt, if I can find it. We're going to reinstall it, and then we'll pull this bad boy out, and we'll have a look at the filter. Holy moly, pocket full of posy. I finally got out of this damn thing. Oh, all right, well, like promised, I am, I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying this. Let me uh, change the demographics here. This is nice. It's made in, oh wow, well, look, it's made in the USA. Okay, so thank you for watching up to this point. Here's the ring that you don't need because they give you one. We can put that here. Here's the filter that's paper, product of USA. That is nice and nice. See? So that we could just kind of. So there's about a good half a quart in there. So what we'll do is, we'll, it's, ooh, it's like warm to the touch. And we'll just drain it out. Drain it out. It's okay. It doesn't have to be completely dry. It doesn't have to be completely drained. Well, it has to be completely drained, but it doesn't have to be, like, perfect. See? Nicey nice.
We'll put that back. We'll leave that like that. We'll clean my hands. We'll grab these uh, pads and we'll pull the we'll pull the filter on the pad and we'll just wipe the outside. All right. I uh, clean the outside of the um, canister again for the inside. It doesn't have people spray it out. Like no, you just want to touch it and not get oil on you. So that's ready to go. This is the comparison. This one and this one right here, exactly the same. And here is the O-ring, the new one, and there's the old one. So what you want to do is take the filter. The orientation is universal. You want to push it down. That's it. It just sits in there, bolting it up and tightening it. It does its job. Now what you want to do is take a little bit of oil with your finger, if you want, right here. And you want to just massage the O-ring. doesn't have to be saturated just enough to where it helps you put it back. And now we're going to put it back. Hello everybody, I'm under the car. This is my point of view. There is Jay. <laughs> okay, so like I said, there's the shaft, there's the O-ring. This is what I'm seeing. The shaft goes in the middle, duh. And the O-ring goes around the side. Okay, the O-ring is in. I like to take a little flathead and just ever so slightly go around it, get it seated into the actual engine. You notice how nicey-nice that's going in? It's because I lubed it up. I luby luby. Oh, this is perfect. I like it. I like it. Now we're going to give the phone back because I need two hands and we're going to put this canister into this hole. Okay, here it is. A little bit lighter, but not that much. It has this beautiful factory little thing here. Um, technically, it's supposed to face this way because that's the way Corvette wants it. I kind of just get this on without cross-threading it, and I worry about all that crap later. So you kind of get under it like that. You want to twist the entire canister. There you go. And when you get that started, and you're sure it's not cross-threaded, mm -hmm. and you got the little bit of an oil here. There we go. There it is. You want to start it by hand. You want to go all the way up. And you want to test the canister. There we go. There's always going to be residual oil. You might have to move the canister. A little bit it's not a true tight fitting it's tight when it gets tight does that make sense leading up to it is almost like wonky does that make sense yeah there we go so again if we had a lift a lift <laughs> we would then put... we would put oil in that canister so you don't have a dry start now for nothing all these people on YouTube who do cold starts on all their cars just to do a cold start, that's probably doing more damage than you're doing with an oil change. And not for nothing, you had Jiffy Lube type places way back in the day when this car was king of the road, and they probably did not put oil in there either. They would just put oil in, start it up, and that was it. So. Of course, you're supposed to take out a book and you're supposed to look at the torque setting. I've been changing oil. I'm 40 years old. I've been changing it, watching it being changed, looking at it being changed. Seen a thousand videos of Scotty Kilmer doing it. And just listen, I've never gone wrong with just tight and then an oomph. Your oomph is different than mine. If you're 14, dad, change it. If you're 60, <laughs> Son, change it. If I'm 40, here we go. See, here's a little, see how I can't change it? Just oomph, that's it. Now, because it's the filter and it expands and it extracts, I do go a little bit more on the filter because it will drip in the winter, but the drain plug is installed. I tightened it. It had a plastic O-ring and I just 
just a little oomph. You, I can't mimic that on camera. It's it's what they call a mechanical feel. It, it's something you get in time. If any of you have been wrenching even very limited amounts, when you first started, when Daddy handed you the wrench when you were 12, and he said, tighten the bolt, he would then take the wrench and double check because he had that feel. It's something you develop in time that you don't get uh, just starting out. Yes. So absolutely. we now have the filter in, the canister bolted up. Everything is wiped clean. There's no oil residue on anything. The surface on the floor is clean. We're going to drop the car and we're going to put in the oil. Now we're lowering the vehicle. So we've just put the handle down and on this jack, we're going to unscrew the handle. And we remove the jacks. Yes, very important to remove the jack stands first. Well, if you don't, the car would stay. It's only going to go down to the jack stands, and right. that's going to be it. But, uh, yeah, so, anyways. I like to lower it slow. Oh, yeah, always a good idea to lower it slow. The tire monkeys and that, do it fast. It's not their car. They don't care. But, as you see... Coming back down to the ground. And we have been grounded. And now, of course, the jack itself is going to lower. We'll pull that out, and now we're going to add in some oil. Okay, here's the oil. Like I said, 10W30. We're changing it. It was 5W20. Please, if you take anything out of this 14-hour video, is when you remove the cap, Take the O-ring with you, because it shouldn't happen. But sometimes, certain things finds itself in wrong places. <laughs> we took apart an engine many, many years ago. I remember that time. Well before videos in YouTube, and we took the valve off of a Honda Civic, and we saw a little five quart, uh, one quart, one quart jug O-ring sure the in did the air of like, the valve train, and. In all honesty, the plastic is definitely malleable, so it probably didn't do any damage. It wasn't like a metal ring, but still, it wasn't from the factory. Right, and God forbid that gets in the cylinder. I mean, chances are it would just vaporize, really, right. but it would, with clearances being that tight, if your piston comes up that close and you got plastic there, well, you, you, don't, yeah, <laughs> you, you don't want that to happen. So make sure that there are no uh, obstacles in the way. So we have a generic funnel. I like to use the longer one, so the pivot point, if you use a short one, it has a tendency of moving. I like to get it right down in there, give it a little tap. You're not hurting it, plastic and metal. We have five quarts. This book says four quarts for the engine, one quart for the filter. So what I like to do is not dump the whole thing in. We'll go to about halfway, we'll check the dipstick, we'll go another half, about four, We'll crank her over, I'll make sure I have pressure, we'll shut it down, and then we'll dump the whole bottle in. Right, and one of the reasons that's important is obviously on your dipstick you have your full and your low or add one quart mark. Never ever go below the add one quart mark. I don't think I can get a focus on that, but never go below the add one quart mark. But they always build safeties into engines. So if it does actually go below that, theoretically there's enough oil still in the engine after the low mark to give you just a little bit more time there. Don't ever run your engine out or low on oil, but again, we know what we're doing as far as checking it and how much it's going to need. So we're and just going to... technically, gonna... there is a theoretical science behind it. I think you don't need this much. I think these engines need half the amount. It's just that I think society is like, wait, you're putting two quarts in a big, in a small block V8? Yeah. It actually doesn't need five. Right. <laughs> there's, there's always an excess of oil. Right. And a lot of that is to help with going around corners and stuff like that. So there's always oil in the oil pan. I like this jug because you can hold it this way. We get about halfway up. It goes down. It goes down. We get about, see the way I'm tilting it? If you tilt it the conventional way, like a milk carton, you might get a spill out of it. They're, they kind of design these things where they're like, wait, 
How do we make these better because they're spilling all over the engine? See the nice honey? One full year, September 2nd to October, whatever today is. Third, Third. fourth. It wasn't black. I could have went six months to another year. Again, I don't. And black, what's black? Why, because it gets hot and the piston rings and everything is black? Just whatever carbon, right. combustion carbon. gases. So, I, a car like thing? this, how many miles were on this oil? 87. 87 miles. But in two years, it went 277. So I didn't document last year. But right now, it says 87 miles since for one year. That's right. just because I didn't go anywhere. I got COVID in November. Well, we all know the deal. Some years, you put on hundreds. Some years, you put on none. See, see I like how I could let go of the funnel because the shaft is in the engine. I'm at like uh, 2.5, so I, I still want to go. We're going to add uh, somewhere around enough and then see what the dipstick happens to say. Take it out. We're not going to look at it because the oil technically... Well, it was already sticking out of the engine. Right, so we're going to go down. Going to put it in. One, two, three. I'm going to bring it up. And technically, we're right below full, which would make sense that one quart. Right, because the engine has not been started yet, and being that the filter is going to use a quart by itself, if we start it now, what's going to happen is it should be down to the add one quart mark after that filter gets full. Yes, sir. So are we ready to start it? Uh, we can now, yes. So let's okay. get into position, and we'll... Put the cap on, obviously, over here because... You never know. Yeah, bad things might happen, so don't take the chance. Okay, everything is all set to go. Should be a go. Cap back on there. Neutral, everything's good. Once it starts, we may hear some valve train noise because there's no oil in the filter. It has to fill that up, which just takes a moment. Get pumped around the engine. So if we do hear any lifter noise, anything like that, it should quiet up in five to ten seconds. Let's go. I didn't really hear any lifter noise at all, so... We have oil pressure. And I told you that late. Okay, so now we've circulated that oil, filled up the filter in that, and we're going to check the level. All right, wipe the stick. And then dip your stick. And let's see, what do we got? Below the ad. Nothing Below the ad, so like, like we said, stick. right. So no damage occurred because we did have oil pressure. The gauge indicated oil pressure. So everything's good. You don't want to run it in that condition for long because there might not be enough oil. So now we're going to dump the rest of it in, start it, let it run, and then of course check it and you top off what you need. The key here is you don't want to overfill. Just because the book says five quarts doesn't mean it's 4.9 or 5.2. You may need a little less, a little more. It's a guideline. It's close, but not necessarily exact. So we're just gonna finish servicing the oil, servicing the engine with oil, and we'll come back. All right, took the dipstick out. I ended up putting all five quarts in because right around the four and change it said add, which was in the middle. So we're just gonna put this back in. All right, moment of truth, which obviously, there it is, full-ish. You might have to run it because it has to filter. There's the full mark, and there is the actual oil mark. That is kind of odd, but it might have to run. There's but, still oil in the upper part of the engine. Yes, that's true. The too. engine is also warm, so chances are tomorrow morning with a cold engine, it should be right up to the full mark. But and I, that really is when you should be checking your oil. Yes. Um, in all honesty, 
I've had this car for quite some time and I've done the same thing every year with Jay off camera and it's at the full mark every year. You could even see in the, I don't know if you could see, you could see right where my fingernail is, there's a permanent burn where the full mark is. Five quarts is what this engine takes. It didn't leak, it didn't blow, well, no, shit, I need a double jack, right? <laughs> It's not leaking. Nothing. Nothing is leaking. I will obviously start it. We'll back it out. I'll run it for a couple minutes. But unless I blow a bolt, I'm not going to drop the oil. But it's got to talk to each other so here's the mile per hours which is not going anywhere here is the idle speed most important here is the oil pressure which is spot on between 30 and 60 when you hit the gas it rises <laughs> there's the temperature battery is flickering in the middle might need a new battery one day and then obviously your fuel gauge now that's uh that well we've let it run for a few minutes everything is running nice and smooth now she's got a little heat in her everything's running well and uh that is a successful oil change so thanks for watching this is how you change your oil in my 19 Corvette Stingray. Thanks Jay for holding the camera and giving me my tools and uh, thanks for watching.